Does anybody want to join me to do some colouring and shading with your stamp of hope? You don't have to have the stamp of hope tonight. You can have any one of the stamps. So you can have a colouring book for adults or um, just anything that's got a face so that I can show you how to colour and shade. Um, let me know if you're there so that I know if it's worth me doing. Um, let me know how you're getting on. Let me know, send me some pictures, put them in my group. Um, hi Rebecca, nice to have you here. Um, hope you're all ready and got your stamps all set out and your pencils ready to go. Um, I'm not sure how many more people are going to be joining me. I think that's maybe about 13. Um, so I don't know whether to wait to see if everybody's there or not, or whether I just get going. Hi Joe, how are you? Nice to see you. And Jan, hi Jan. And Ash, hello Ash. <laughs> it's nice to have you here. Um, I hope you're all getting on okay. I know we're in some trying times at the minute, but it's quite nice to, that we can do this and all get together and have some colouring. Hi Karen and Joe again. Hi Joe <laughs> and Marie, hi. It's lovely to have you all here. Uh, I know that some people don't know what a stamp is, but I'm hoping that if you watch tonight, you'll get an idea of what it is. And I'll show you how to colour and shade. And hi, Elizabeth. So I think we'll just get started. I've got Lola here with me again tonight. So here's Lola. She's got hers all stamped out, ready to go. And so I just need to go through the process of turning the camera around. And I know it looks a bit silly when I'm doing that. But here we go. I hope you're all okay. So if I do it that way, and then I have to put it up. So just bear with me, everyone, while I try to get it. And, and then I need to... Like that. Yeah, and I need to get this there. I think that'll be okay. Just like that one time. You might put it there, seeing it like that. So would I need to do that? I think I need to do it this way. I hope that's okay. And I hope that's close enough that you can see. So, anyway, who else have I got? Hi, Carol. And hi, Louise. And hi, Kathy. Oh, it's so lovely. Kathy's in America. So, oh, it's lovely. I've got some lovely people with me tonight. So, I'll just try to manoeuvre this a little bit. So, this here is my original artwork. I'm just going to move it up a little bit. So, this was Hope. Um, this was the original artwork that inspired the stamp and the stamp for those who doesn't know who don't know it's it's basically just an image on polymer material and then you just ink it up and stamp it on some paper and then you can color and shade it so i'll move this along so this here is a stamp this is the stamp and this is a finished um draw a finished coloring and shading that i did and I'm sorry if there's going to be a shadow. I'm in my kitchen and I don't have all the, the right um, things that you need. But if you just bear with me while I get my piece of paper. So I'm going to move her away. And I'm going to try and get it that it's not in a shadow. So hopefully that'll be okay. So here we go. So this is Hope. And I thought she was appropriate. And what I'm going to use, a lot of people use black ink. And that's fine if you like to have a black outline. But what I use is Distressed Oxide. And it's the Tattered Rose. But I found as well that the Victorian Velvet works just as good. And the reason I use this colour of stamp is because it's quite skin-like. Which means that it doesn't have the black line going around it. And you can make it look more like a drawing. So I'm going to stamp her down. Hopefully it'll work. Um, if not, I've got one already stamped out. But you just press it down as hard as you can. And try and get all the little corners. And then hopefully we shall have... Yeah, there. Can you see that okay? So let me know if you're all going to colour in with hope. Or Hi, Jane. Lovely to see you too. And Gail. Right, I've got some lovely people here tonight. 
and we'll get started. So Lona's got hers, yeah? And we'll start where I always start. I'm sorry, there's a wee bit of black on there. I'll start with the eyes because that's where I always start with my drawings. And tonight, I'm going to start off with a turquoise or a cobalt green. And I'm sorry about the shadow. I'm hoping it's not going to be too much of a distraction. But I'm going to just start with very, very light circular motions, just colouring in the iris of the eye, like what we did last Sunday with the drawing. So just very, very faint and light. And let me know if I'm going too fast or if you have any questions. And if I can't answer them during, during the live tutorial, I shall get back to you at the end and reply to you. So there we've got our first little layer and then I am going to go for purple. So purple on top of green and I'm going to use the purple around the outside. So do I need to bring it down a little bit? I'm wondering. There. Is that better? Can you see? You might not see all of her face but at least you'll see the eye. Yeah? Okay, so then with the purple on the outside always keep it darker up here at the top where your eyelid's going to come over and then just gradually come round the outside with the purple we'll use whatever colour you like you can do your eyes whatever. I've been getting some lovely eyes on my group you've all done amazing it's nice to see you all having a go afterwards And so again, in the inside, I'm going to put a little bit here. And again, have a play around with, with the colours you put in your eyes and the strokes and the little squiggles to get your little marble effects. What colour are you using, Lola? Brown. Well, you're having brown eyes tonight. I just thought purple tonight for some reason. So they're a little bit darker in underneath the lid. And again, at the other side, because that's where the shadow's going to be and just a darker line coming around and so you can see by me using the light ink you've got a lot more control over um, your outside lines you can really define them yourself and then it starts to look more like a drawing rather than a stamped image that's what I find anyway and so all the way around so how are we all doing let me know how you're doing let me know if there's anything that you want to know and I'll help you if I can. But I'm hoping that this evening's just going to be about relaxing and doing a little bit of colouring and shading. And if you have a little glass of wine or whatever you like to have in the evening, that's quite nice too. I've just got water. <laughs> have I had any comments? Sorry, dear, I'll have to watch later. No, that's fine, Louise. You can watch later. Don't worry. Technology. It's always a good thing. I'm now going to use my light, a lighter blue and come back into the eye and try and colour some of those little bits that were in on the inside. But there's no rules. Just the more you're doing it, the more you'll find that you can get different effects with your eyes with the different colours. And sometimes I'm happy with the eyes I do, sometimes I'm not. It's just the way that it is. So now I'm going to do some sparkles inside the eye and I'm going to use... Um, it's a bistro colour, it's like a, a pale brown, but I always do the first layer a different shade from black, one of the dark shades. And I'm going to do a little, um, Lola calls it a bean shape, don't you darling? That's a bean. <laughs> and a little circle. And then just start little circular motions, just shading that in. Like what we did, I don't know if Everybody that was there last Sunday are the same people here tonight. So let me know and let me know what other things you want to learn and do. And we'll, we'll try and do some bits during this time when we're all in. I hope you're all doing well. I hope everybody's keeping healthy and well. So there, that's the first shade of brown. And then I'm going to use a darker brown now. It's um, walnut brown, but... Use whatever colour you like and I'm going to go over 
with another layer just little circular motions and do do them as faint as you can and then build up try to not put any pressure down because once you've done that it's very very difficult to try and manipulate or change what you've done so now with the same brown I'm now going to follow the line of the eye which again using the light ink that gives you control instead of having it all defined in black you can and it's good to help you with your drawing as well so you can just go over the line and it might help build up your confidence at, at drawing so there just all the way around and then with the same brown I'm going to start giving her the shadow over her eye in here so just underneath the lid right into the white of the eye bring in some of the brown and the same at the other side and that's her starting to get a little shadow and if you've got a white or a cream or or a pale shade just start to fill in the white of the eye and remember the white of the eye is never completely white so you can start adding your greys and some pinks and things in there to try and make it a bit more realistic right, i'm going to leave the eye at that for now and we'll go back in with blacks and dark colors later when um we've done some of the skin i know a lot of people wonder about the shading of the skin and it really is all about really, really light circular motions and just going over it again and again to build it up. So I always start here because this is the point where you've got the bridge, you're working out towards the bridge of the nose. So just little circular motions here and then you start to get an idea of where you want the little bag under your eye. So it might take a little while before you start to see this build up because it's such a light shade but then you start to bring it down where the bag of the eye is and I always keep the bag white I mean a lot of artists will do that bit darker because in realistic terms it would be a bit darker in there but this is the way I do it with my whimsical girls because there aren't really any rules are there when there's when they're little whimsical girls so now with your pale now if you don't have a pale, it's not called skin tone anymore, it's called um, beige red. But if you've got any any kind of peachy colours or depending on what colour of skin you want to do, just um, whatever the lightest tone of skin is, just start with that. And then little circular motions and you can bring that all the way up to her eyebrow. And then just be aware that you're going to have a sparkle round about here somewhere. So just aim to just start shading in until you get to that point where you're going to have a little sparkle and just leave it white and take it all the way into the hairline so how are we doing somebody has just maria's just tuned in hi maria thank you for joining us and glenda saying where can i buy your stamps denise well hello glenda how are you um I have just recently had a website made and so you can get them on my website or until I got that goes live you can just let me know and I'll send them out to you it's up to you but thank you Glenda oh it's nice to think that you would like my stamps and I hope your mum's here as well Glenda because she quite likes learning doesn't she so um so yeah, so now we've gone all the way up to the hairline. Is everybody still with me? Am I moving too fast? Just little sec. Have a practice as well on the side. Just practice pressing down really, really light. Little sec motions. And then again, do it a little bit harder. And then a little bit harder. Sorry, you can't see what I'm doing. A little bit. And then a little bit harder again. And then harder again and you'll get to a point where you feel that it gets really shiny that's when you've burnished your pencil and you really don't want to do that until the very end when you're completely happy with what you've got and you've built up your, your skin tone so try as light as you can as light as you can and then try even lighter so then we just continue all the way around little circular motions and this little bit here will color as well 
So we'll start off doing half of the face and see how we're doing for time. So can you see, I'm going to bring it down a little bit. Can you see that starting to build up? It does take a few layers, but we'll start down at the bottom of the eye now, the exact same thing, bringing it all the way around. Remembering where you want the little bag under your eye and just leave it white and there. Just continue all the way around. I'm sorry about the shadow. I need to get some, pro I need a proper studio. <laughs> That's not gonna happen. So hopefully you're, you're, you're able to see okay. So there are little circular motions all the way over the cheek. And bringing it in almost towards the nose. Just leave a little white space. And so that you've kind of got your first layer yeah and now if you continue with that same color and go over it again you'll start to see where you can have areas darker than the rest so this bit here is always going to be darker where the where it comes out towards the bridge of the nose so go give it an extra little layer and could you turn the image round please what this That's way this way. Yeah, that's what I was saying. The phone. Right, let me see if I can I can't do it. Let me take let me take this out. Turn this bit around. Um, bear with. The only thing is we've got a big shadow now, I think. Um I don't know if it's going to work that way. How can I fix the shadow? Hi Maureen, how are you? So Sam, I've turned it round, but I don't know if it's going to be better because of the shadow. What do you think? Do you want me to turn it back round? Hi Joy. Yeah, I don't know that you're going to see okay. How's every, is that shadow going to bother everybody? Somebody let me know, because it's kind of bothering me. <laughs> but so anyway, let me see if I can move it a little bit. Hmm. Hi Anne, how are you? Right, I'm not sure what to do about the shadow situation, everybody. Will I continue drawing? Too shadowy now, so I'm right, I'll turn it back around. down is it turn it back everybody's saying <laughs> right bear with me everybody try and get it back there how's that is that going to be better right let's have a try at least this way you can see it without the sh I'm sorry if it's on its side um but hopefully you'll still get an idea. If it's... Right, so now we're going to be a little bit darker in here on this line here. So you can give it another layer. And now I'm going to use a darker shade. It's called Cinnamon. So it's just a little bit darker than the pale light skin tone that you've just been using and now you're going to do that in here to build up your shadow can you see that starting to build up and then make it darker in here again in where your eyes socket is and then bring it round towards the back of your eye again is that starting to make sense for everybody so the secret is to have it darker here and then just gradually get lighter and lighter as it goes up. So with the pale light, the pale flesh tone, just gradually bringing it up. How are you getting on, darling? You getting on okay? Yeah. 
so let me know if you're all having a show and please if you are having a show I'd love to see them if you put them into the group because it's so nice to see what you all do so there that's starting to build up slowly and you would take it all the way along the hairline we'll do it to about there yeah and now I'm going to come back down onto the cheek and we'll start to build a bit of the cheek up so all the starting at the outside and working your way in because it's like you're almost dragging the colour in and it gives you more control. If you start here and make make it really heavy, then you, you're not going to have a chance to fix that. Whereas if you start at the outside and just gradually bring it in, then you start to see it slowly build up and you get an idea of where you want your cheek to be as well. So... Continue all the way down and just slowly bringing it in. I hope you're all doing okay. Let me know and I will get back to you at the end if you've got any questions. So bring it all the way down to her chin as well. And I like to draw a little circle, a little imaginary circle there. And I always keep that little bit white. So you can then use your, your, your pale... Um, skin tone to go all the way around that and that's going to be the little shine that you have on your chin and that helps to build up the illusion of the face being a bit round and then bring it all the way up and then a little bit of skin tone we're going to colour in her lips as well so and the good thing is if you haven't used the black ink you can take away this little bit in the middle you can have her with her mouth open or you can fill it that her mouth is closed so just a little bit of the pale and then we'll go into her nose so it's the same idea starting at the outside and bringing it in just dragging it in and along the bottom along here and again here I do a little imaginary circle here and then you're going to colour all the way around that. And eventually that'll help build, make the nose look round. So the secret is to always have it darker all the way around the outside, gradually, gradually, lighter, lighter, and then in the centre it's white. And that helps to build up the illusion of the shape of the nose. So hopefully we'll, you'll start to see that, that occur. And same underneath her nose. So I do a little circle here as well. And I colour it. And somebody did tell me what that little bit's called, but I can't remember the name of it. But with your white pencil, if you have one, you can go along the outside line of the lips. Just all just follow it all the way along. And then that helps to build up that little retreading bit. So that bit's white. And then you can also do a little bit of white that's going up either side of that little circle that you've just done. Yeah? Am I making sense? And is everybody following me? Is everybody there? Let me know if you're still there or if I'm just sitting on my own with Lola in my kitchen. I've got 26 people. Oh, that's lovely. So there, that little bit white. And now with your pale skin tone, go back and just around those little white bits, start to very lightly. Don't be heavy handed. Just start to follow down that little bit of white. And then that'll eventually start to give that... Um, that bit of your face. I don't know what it's called. I'm going to have to research it and I'm going to have to learn it and remember it. <laughs> so you can either continue doing this all the way in and have just have this bit um, just flat looking or you can create a little bridge here. Now I, I vary between, uh, sometimes I do a little bridge, sometimes I don't. So I'm just going to do with little circular motions coming down this bridge here and then you start to see the nose starting to appear 
So this little bit here can all be a little bit darker now. So go in there now. Do you notice how they're the same colour? You can start to see the different shades appearing. Are you noticing that? And how you can just keep going over and over and have bits that are lighter and bits that are darker using the same pencil. Because when I figured that out, that was when I started to feel my drawing change. So there, we're starting to get a little bit of a bridge. And that little bit is darker, but you can continue now, just lightly coming in. And then with your white pencil, draw a little line up here. And that's going to be the right in the centre bit. That'll, that little bit there is always going to be whiter. And you can colour in your little... Um, circles that you've done as well on our chin and on our nose yeah and there's a little bit up here make it white as well oh sorry so now I'm going to use the darker the cinnamon color to start building up her nose so again where you've already been we're going to do the exact same thing, but starting on the outside, just not bring it all the way in. We're just going to go all the way around the outside, the outside of the inside of the nose. So that's that, this line here. So working your way in and take it all the way along. So keeping it all on the outside and keep it sort of like going round, like in that sort of. Um, motion so that eventually this bit here is going to be like a curly bit so it's almost like you're getting another little circle appear is everybody following me and bring it all the way along and then I tend to leave a little bit of white here at the side can you see that so with your pencil just under that nostril just do a little line like so and then you've got a little bit of white beside it can you see that okay i'm wondering if i've got any more comments oh maria saying amazing how it just evolves yeah still here watching closely alicia concentrating <laughs> i'm hoping that i'm helping you let me know that if I'm being helpful or not and if you want to see me doing these i'm just doing it because i'm thinking of everybody sitting at home feeling isolated, feeling a bit bored, maybe a bit lost and I know that it's nice to have a bit of company and to sit and do something that you enjoy doing with somebody else so let me know if you're happy for that to be happening and if not I won't do them. <laughs> I would hate to think I was annoying you all. So there, see it's starting to come together. Just, and it's just all little, little, little tiny strokes. So, sorry, I should be back on her nose. Let's go back to the nose. This is what I do. I start jumping around. And I think, oh, I'll do her eye now. Oh, no, I'll go back and do her nose. <laughs> I get a bit lost in it, but it's nice. So, bring that all the way around. And what you can do as well to help build up the nose is you can do a little, a little line here. And then that starts to make it look round. And once you bring in even darker colours, it starts to look more like a circle. So it feels like it's popping off her face a little bit. Now I might have gone a little bit heavy handed here, but I should have done this a little bit lighter. But I'm trying to I'm trying to do it to let you see. Yeah. You see her nose starting to take a little bit of shape. So to make it take a little bit more shape again get get a shade of brown or a shade of gray or just something a bit darker and ha start having a play with your pencils because sometimes you could even use a purple um anything like that whoops i've dropped my white so yeah i've got like a a darker brown and now i'm going to do the same again keeping it as close to the line And just taking it up up a little bit not as far up as what i've gone with the other ones just sort of kind of keeping this corner a little bit darker 
and then it starts to protrude even more. Can you see that? And I'm going to use my skin tone again and just build this bit back up a little bit so you can see that white bit a bit more. It's all just a little slow process but I find it ever so relaxing. And it's just nice to get lost in the zone for a little while. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> sometimes I think, oh, that's just not the way I wanted it to look. But I think it's about not putting pressure on yourself and just enjoying the process. So I'm now using an even darker brown. This is walnut brown. And I'm just using it just on the corners. And you can see how by not using the black ink, you can really start to build it up to look more like a drawing. And I'm going to use that brown as well just to fill in her nostril. I'm trying to do it while, with phone kind of in my way, but then that'll event, you'll eventually do them black. And you can do a little bit brown here as well, just ever so slightly, just do it lightly. And Rebecca's saying, loving it. Oh, that's good, Rebecca. I'm really pleased that I'm helping. Good. That's what I want to hear. I want to have happy people <laughs> enjoying the process of having a play with our pencils. So there, can you see the nose starting to pop a little bit more? If you practice doing like orbs, where you always start with the lightest colour and then gradually darker, darker, and you end up with this little white, then you start to see the circle start to appear. So. I know that drawing orbs can be a bit boring, but they really do help with your drawing when you start, or, or with your shading. So then I'm going to leave her nose, I'm going to blow that away. Leave her nose for a little while. And now with, with a brown or a grey or whatever colour you're using for your shadows and shading, I'm going to go up to the eye now, yeah? And in this bit here where her eye um, lid is, just darken it up a little bit. Just go over that line just like so and then that helps it that that's like the shadow and that helps the eye to start look and you can do if you start on that line and then just gradually just bring it out just gradually then you start to see the shadow appear just do it softly and work your way along yeah can you see that And just take it all the way along and just draw that line in there. I'm starting to sound sleepy, I'm in <laughs> Sorry, I just get, I just zone out a little bit. So then, and then you can get, once you've done that, you can get a little bit darker. And then that's the, sh the shadow of the lid. I'm going to give her some eyeshadow. What colour will we give her? I think, I think I'll give her the blue. So where's my pale blue? Sorry, I just need to rummage in my, my pencil box. I've got a lighter one. So, sorry about that. I found the pencil that I like for her eye shadow. So, this is, um, what is it? It's turquoise. And just little circular motions just start to fill in her eye shadow. And you can bring that up over as well to where you've just been doing your shadow. And that help, it, it lets you see how you can layer up your colours and how different colours can cause shadows as well. It doesn't have to be your greys and your blacks and your browns. I leave a little bit of white at the top. That'll be the sparkle where the shine's coming down. I'll take it all the way to the end. And then with a darker shade of blue, I'm going to do the same. Except it's not blue, it's cobalt green. Anyway, so just have it darker on the line. 
and then that helps to make the eye pop a little bring it all the way down to the corner and take it all the way along and the same over at this side you all following me okay am i going at the right pace what's everybody saying right now to help the eye pop now we need our black so you can either use your micron pens as well these are really good for going over the lines but at the minute i'm just going to use my black pencil i'm just going to twist it around a little bit so that i can get in so on this line just start to Follow all the way along and you can press down quite hard because you know that you want this to be as black as possible. So there, that starts to let our eye pop a little bit. You see it's starting to come alive just by putting in your black. And with that same black, it starts to colour in her pupil. Little circular motions all the way around. You're doing well, Lola. Is everybody using the Hope stamp, or has anybody got a different stamp, or has anybody got their own drawing? Or what are you doing? Let me know. Do let me know. So there are little circular motions. Starting to fill in the pupil of her eye. You see her eye starting to come alive now. It's amazing what the black does. Some people are frightened of black. But you definitely do need it when you're colouring and shading. Well, Marie's got her own drawing. I can't wait to see it, Marie. I really can't. I hope, I'm hope, it's, I hope it's helping you. And I, the main thing is just to have a play. And the more you pick up your pencil, the more you do it, then the, the, the more you're enhancing your skill. Because that's all it is. It's just a skill that you can improve on just by practicing. Like everything. So there, she's got her little bean sparkle. And with the black as well, I'm just going to have little areas in here as well just to build up the depth not everywhere just every now and again I wondered where that noise was it's Ashley and pouring himself a glass of wine <laughs> I didn't know what it was right there it's a little bit of black there yeah right I think what we'll do now are her lips are we all ready to do some lips so we've already done our um, first layer with the, the pale, um, I'll better put that back on my ink, it'll dry out. So you've done your pale shade, so you've gone in and you've done a little bit of the pale pink in here. Now I'm gonna, I'm not, I'm gonna close our mouth. You can have our mouth open if you like, but I'm just gonna use with a normal, normal pencil, a normal lead pencil, I'm just gonna see the line that's there and I'm going to take it all the way along like so and that's going to be where her mouth closes yeah and then with a pink or whatever color you whatever color you want to do her lips but always start with the lightest color then the next shade up then the next shade up so with her lips and I hope you can see okay we're going to start at the center and just a little stroke that's going the shape of the lip line so you're following that circle like so can you see that and then the same at the other side you're coming the other way like so yeah and then the same you're going to do from from this line that we've just drawn you're going to do the exact same going this way 
like so and just follow all the way along and then same at that side going that way it looks a bit weird at the minute she looks like she's got staples on her lips and then at the bottom you're going to come up with your little lines like so yeah now by doing these little lines you're starting to make the lips look fuller and then the same at this line that you've done you're going up the way yeah so you've done that and now with your pencil you just very lightly because you want them lines to stay there just little circular motions start to fill in some of the color and it's always going to be darkest in here where the lips close between the top and the bottom this bit's always going to be a bit darker so little circular motions put some color in there and you'll start to see see them build up yeah and then a little bit of color at the bottom as well keep keep it a little bit white in the middle because that's where you're going to have the little shine every now and again And then the same at the top, a little bit of circular motions. Right, so that's one shade. Right, now you find another shade of pink, a little bit darker than the one you've just done, or a red. Depends what colour you want our lips to be. And we're going to go through the same process again. Doing your little lines. And going up as well. And coming down. Do you see them starting to build up? Coming this way. And then filling it in in the centre a little bit darker. What's everybody saying? I missed the start so we'll catch up. That's fine Dawn, yeah you can catch up later. Lined lips were always a favourite of yours, <laughs> Glenda's saying. I always used to have lip liner on when I was younger. I think that's what she's making reference to. Yeah, I always had my lip liner on when I was younger. <laughs> Thank you, Glenda, for reminding me. The good old days. So there, so it's a little bit darker in there. How's everybody getting on with their lips? Well, I bring it up a bit closer. It's a bit hard to say, isn't it? And I'm going to go a bit darker. So you can even use oranges and things in your lips. It's quite nice. So I'm going to use some orange now. Just every now and again, little lines. Bring them round like so. And then it's always going to be darker here at the bottom. I've come out of the line a little bit, not to worry. And it's going to be a little bit darker up here at the top. Like so. Yeah, I quite like orange lips. But keep building up your colours. You can go over the top of that now with red if you like. Just keep having a play. But get to the point where you can have this bit here really dark. I'm struggling in this light now actually. It is so nice and it's been still light. It's a quarter to eight and it's still light. How lovely is that? It's really good. I love spring in the summer it's just such a shame what we're going through at the minute but not to worry we'll all get through it we'll just draw our way through it that's that's what my plan is <laughs> right now with the black I'm going to define this line that we've just done so sorry, I'm going to turn her around a bit so in here this bit here is going to be dark and you can extend her smile if you like or you can have it going down if you want it to look a bit sadder have a play around with how you want her to look it's 
so that and then put a little bit of black or brown just underneath here as well and that'll make her lips look that'll be the shadow of the lips coming out from the, the face right we're going to do some more skin tones everybody still with me and is everybody all right is everybody getting bored you'll get the lips eventually gail just keep practicing it's all about practicing I'll do one just on lips another time where we, where we draw the lips. So this little bit here that we've done earlier on, it'll be starting to fade out a little bit. So go back in and start to fill that back in again. And now that you've got your lips, you'll start to see that, that um, start to take more effect. So with that, and then with your darker skin tone, just faintly, you can just do a little line here, like so. And then it starts to make it look like it's popping out a little bit. Just a little line, yeah? Can you see that? I hope I'm helping. Yeah? Right, with the pale skin tone, we're gonna go in and do a little bit more of our cheek. So, from the outside, working our way in again, some more little strokes, little circular motions. And don't anybody be beating yourself up tonight, thinking, oh, well, that, that's not working out. Or just keep practicing. Every time you go back to your pencils, you've, you've learned something from the last time that you've done. And you'll only ever improve. So, little circular motions, filling in her cheek. And then you start to see that bag under her eye start to appear. Can you see it starting to appear? And filling in the cheek. And then we'll give her some nice blusher as well. And you can like draw little hearts on your cheeks or you can use the stamps and make little swirls or little hashtags or little swirlies whatever it's quite nice just to have a play and let you girls come to life and just a little bit of her chin as well and i try i try to leave a little bit of white between this line and in here does that make sense a little bit of white just there so build that little bit up and you'll start to see the white appear. What time are we on? Oh, so we've nearly been doing this for an hour. I hope you're not getting bored. Is anybody getting bored? Oh, thank you, Francis. It's great how it all comes together. And Anne's loving it. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's good. I'll keep going then if people are having fun and enjoying it. So just keep doing your little circular motions. And you don't want any white here between this line because this is where the hair is and the skin starts. So you really don't want any white. And just keep taking it round. There's the little bag starting to, starting to show now. I can't wait to see what you've all done. Looking forward to seeing it in the group yeah right so I think I've got enough there so you can continue I keep I tend to keep this little area here around here lighter and then a little bit of pink here just on the lips where the lip line is just here on this line here just put a little bit of your pink in there but then keep this and then just try and emphasize this little white bit that you've already done you've seen that come together just try and find where you did your white line with the pencil and then this little bit here tends to be whiter and around the nose tends to be whiter so you can also use your cream here so bring your cream in here 
and get this little bit because this little bit is going to be paler than the rest. You can go over the top of where you've been with your cream as well and that makes it look a little bit more cohesive, keeps it all. You don't want it to look patchy, you sort of like trying to let it all blend into each other. So what pencils are everybody using? Are you using your Faber Castells or Prismacolors or let, let me know what you're using and how you're getting on with them. So now I'm going to get a pink for her cheeks. Um, which one will I use? Can I use this one, Diane? Yeah. No, that one. Yeah, that one. So I'm using light magenta. And so starting right at the line, doing what we've already done, little cycle motions, dragging it in towards the centre. Just slowly, and then you get an idea. Just keep checking every now and again to think, right, is that where I want our cheek to be? And then that gives you more control. Just slowly bringing it in. Just keep going. Yeah, so you can start to see her cheek appearing now, can't you? So just continue doing that. How are we all doing? Is everybody still with me? I'm not sure. <laughs> oh no, not bored. Oh that's good Marie. I never get bored, could do with longer. Oh thank you Gail. I'm going I'm not going anywhere yet. We'll just we'll just keep going. We'll do a little bit of hair as well. And see how we get on. Yeah, everybody happy for that? Melanie's saying definitely. That's good. So is everybody doing all right? Is everybody getting on okay being at home? Have you got company or are you, are you at home alone or how is it how is it for you all? I'm at home just Lola and Ash and I and our two cats. And we've been trying to do things that we don't have time to do. So we're trying to make the best of it. So, Sam's saying she's still here using Faber Castell. I hope that you don't mind it being on its side, Sam. I'm ever so sorry. And Carol's still there and enjoying it. And Maria's bought some Aldi pencils just to try for her retirement to have something to do. Lovely. Let me know how you got on with them. And Rebecca's still there. Right, well that's a good sign. I've got people who are still with me. So we'll keep going. So, can you see the cheek now starting to appear? And because I'm doing it slowly, and because I haven't started here in the middle, you know, I, it's, it's making it more controllable. And you start to feel where the cheek is. So I'm quite happy. Oh, hi, Glenda, you're still there. Are you drawn, Glenda? I would love to know if you've got your pencils out. And Cathy, thank you so much, Dee. Oh, it's lovely, Cathy, to know that you're here, because I know that you're in America and that you sometimes can't fit in with our time scale. So it's lovely to know that you've managed to join us tonight. So welcome. I hope you're getting on okay as well. So there, little circular motion. So can you see how that's just lots of little layers? Just keep going over it. And when you go back, if you were to do it tonight and go back to it tomorrow, you do notice that it starts to fade in to the paper a little bit. So Karen's still here and she's concentrating and Glenda's just watching. <laughs> that's fine, Glenda. And somebody's got WH Smith pencils. You may need a present. You may need to get yourself some Faber Castell. But you know what? I've been working with the Prisma colours as well, and they're good. It's good to mix them up. Actually, I like using the Faber Castell, and then I've been adding Prisma colours to some of them, and I think they work lovely together. So you know, and I tried the Luminance as well, and they're good. 
Right there, so her cheeks starting to look okay. And I'm going to emphasise her, um, so Louise is using watercolour pencils. Well, I haven't tried those. Let me know how they are. And Pat, you're still there, so that's lovely to know. So I'm going to now move in and do her hair, a little bit of her hair. We'll come back and do a little bit of her neck maybe as well. Before I do that, I want to do my, um, where is my pen? Have you seen it, Lola? Oh, there it is. Thank you. I'm going to use the um, micro, the micron pen and we're just going to turn around our side a little bit and I'm going to go in and do this and I'm going to show you how much darker it gets. Do you see that? Once you use your pen and I've actually gone over it a bit. Sorry, I made a bit of a mistake here, but... Not to worry, I'll try and fill it in there, colour it in. So you can see how the black pen makes it pop again, doesn't it? And I'm going to just build this little bit up as well. So with the darker um, skin tone, what's it called now? Coral. It's called coral now, but it used to be called medium flesh. So you might have them still called medium flesh. And then just little circular motions there. And all the way along. And then with this same pencil, all the way along her hairline. And then this is going to be eventually a little bit of brown in here as well to build up the shadow under her. To, to have the effect of the hair coming over her face, you have a little shadow there. So I'm just doing this all the way around. So it's the same idea as the nose, in the sense that the darker it is on the ends and the lighter it is in the middle, the more it starts to look round. So you're doing the same now with her face. So I hope that makes sense. And just bring it all the way along under her hairline like so and then that's going to be brown now let me find my brown so I'm going to use walnut brown but use whatever dark colour you want and then just emphasise this line like so and you can just gradually, just ever so slightly, drag some of that colour out to make a little shadow. Just do it faintly. You don't want it to be really, really dark. You want it to be at its darkest here and then coming out fading really lightly. And then that gives the, the illusion of a shadow. And then do the same all the way along her hairline. So today would have been one of my workshops. I had to cancel it because of what's going on. But, um, so getting to do this tonight is making up for me not getting to do that, hopefully. But we'll get them all rebooked back in again, get some more classes going, because I do enjoy them. It's nice to have an afternoon sitting with everyone, doing a little bit of colouring. So we'll go to about here and then go over that now right on the on the line with black so right here on this line is the black and then do you start to see that you starting to see that that could be the shadow and i think you'll notice it more when we get her hair in Yeah, so I'm going to give her brown hair. What colour is everybody else going to give the hair? Do you do workshops in Scotland? I'm thinking about doing some in Scotland um, this year. I haven't done any yet because I'm down in England. I'm, I'm in Arundel, which is near Peterborough, and I hold my workshops at Hochanda. I don't know if you know Hochanda, um, but it's a, an online shopping TV channel for arts and crafts and I'm lucky that I'm allowed to use some space in there to hold my workshops 
and I get to give everyone a tour out of the TV studios, which is probably the highlight rather than my class. But <laughs> it's um, it's really good. But I, I, I'm from Scotland and I've had a few requests from people in my hometown, which is Stranraer, um, which is about an hour and a half away from Glasgow. But um, I am getting requests for some in Scotland, so it's something I'm going to look to doing. So let me know. Um, do you know of Stranraer? Um, or you know of Achanda, is that what you're saying? But um, yes, so I am going to be doing some workshops, hopefully, in Scotland as well. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully all this will clear up and we'll be able to get back to normal and move around and be I'm missing being around people I really am it's really hard isn't it you do notice how much how much you love being around people when you can't be where, be around them right hair so I'm going to use so with the hair it's best to do your lightest shade first and then build up so I'm going to use this Bistra, cut. No, actually I'm going to steal Lola's one, what colour is that one? This one is raw umber. So I've got raw umber and it's not as sharp as I would like it. So if you just bear with me, I'm just going to sharpen it. And the thing with here is having a sharp pencil and then you get the lines. So. I'm going to start at this part here and I'm going to do her fringe, so little strokes. And now again you can see because we've done it with the light ink, we can go over those lines that we've done that were already there and you've got control to. And then again at the top, like what you did with the lips, I'll bring it down, can you see? So light with the lips, find the top line and then drag them down like so. And then that's you creating the shape of the head and the direction that the hair is going to be growing. So you're always going to do downward strokes because that's the way the hair grows. So just imagine each little stroke you do is a strand of hair and it's going in the direction it should, which is down the way. So you can be quite loose with this on your first layer and just keep keep doing your downward strokes yes yeah, everybody still with me and and again because you've used um, a lighter ink you can be more adventurous with your hair as well you can have little curls coming out if you like you don't have to but it's nice to have a little play and have that versatility so little lines all the way down so this bit you want you don't want any white between where her skin is and where her hair is starting because in reality there would be no white there and I know she's whimsical but it just helps to it just helps keep her look a bit more realistic so just little strokes all the way down. She looks like she's got a beard at the minute. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just shading in this little these little bits between her face. And bring it all the way into her neck. And then from the bottom of her shoulder, bring it up a little bit. You're going to do upward strokes this way. Yeah. And then that helps you to create a little shine here. So just do your little lines going up. Coming down. And just have a little bit here that's going to be a little bit white. And this bit on her shoulder is going to be at its darkest because this will be like a shadow in here. And in here as well, it's going to be at its darkest in her neck. And in here, our face as well. So 
at the bottom and bring her up a bit so at the bottom you can extend her hair you can make it even longer and take it off the page if you want you know I just just you can ignore these lines now because you've got them lighter so you've got more control or you can keep the lines and just just go with it go with it in its original form put little lines all the way up so now by doing that you can see that there's going to be a little shine here and then I'm going to bring you back up to the top of our head we're going to do the same we're going to do our little lines coming down just do them in that direction to give the illusion of roundness and have some of them coming up to me almost but just you're going to leave this little bit in the middle quite white because that's going to be your shine so you want to make sure that this bit here is at its darkest you don't want any white from her skin to the hair so and then you're going to have these wee bits coming round like so yeah so we've done our first layer with some more sort of strokes going in over the top of it this bit here wants to have little hairs coming up so from here just coming up all right right bring this down a little bit more so with her hair, the top bit from here is always going to be at its darkest. So we'll have a darker shade coming in over there. This bit in the middle is going to be at its lightest. So you can use your white, if you like, or a cream. And start, now that you've found that shine, where your shine's going to be, you can just shade that in, just colour it. In up and I'm, I'm doing it in up and down motions just like so yeah and you can do the same in here and you can have a play and decide where you want the shines in their hair it doesn't always have to be here you could have it just maybe a little bit here at the side or coming down depending if you think where the sun's going to be shining in on her that's where the, the shine would be but at the minute I'm having her shine right here at the front and down here yeah right now I'm going to find a darker shade a darker shade of brown and the one I'm going to use is nugget now the more the more that you're doing your strokes now you really want your pencil to be as sharp as possible because that's all you can spend quite a lot of time sharpening your pencils when you're doing hair so I'll bring it down a bit so starting at the top, right on that line, little strokes, little lines, yeah, and so straight away, just by doing that, you can start to see that the shine's going to start getting shinier, can't you? So just little flicks out, and the idea is to keep going over lots of layers and to get rid of any white because you don't have any white spaces unless you've got your little gray spaces I suppose little gray bit but you don't have white bits in your hair it's all solid so there just keep following it around yeah everybody okay anybody chatting to me so Cathy has to go soon, but we'll catch up later. Thank you so much. Please come to the US too, if you can. Oh, I would love that. Absolutely love that. Well, I'll see you again then, Cathy. Thank you for joining me. It's lovely to have people in America join, isn't it? So little, the same, you're just following more of the same, what you did earlier, little strokes from the bottom, little flicks like so. So find your line and then just flick up. Start there and then up. Yeah? 
Is everybody following that okay? And just keep doing that. And so it's just more of the same. It's just an ongoing process. You okay, darling? Yeah. And then bringing them down. This little bit here needs to fill in a bit. And I'll bring her up a bit. Can you see it's starting to take shape? So now little lines from her cheeks, just be careful not to go onto her cheek, just, just bring them down like so. And then just shade in a little bit, just very lightly shade them in. And so Gail, you're still there. Is there anybody else still there? Please let me know. then down here just shade that a little bit in so Rebecca's still there that's good so I've got a couple of people still there Melanie's still there and Heather is oh that's good I've still got people with me and Marie lovely <laughs> you start to think am I just sitting here on my own <laughs> and Karen's still there oh lovely <laughs> And who else? Louise is still there. And Carl. Oh, that's good. I feel reassured. <laughs> and is everybody following me okay? Everybody's managing to keep up with me and follow along. So now I, I could do with sharp, see, I could do a nice sharpening that. That's starting to get blunt for hair. So I'm going to give it another sharpen. I've got Pat, I'm just lost in the colouring. Ah, and Tommy is still watching, and Sam. Thank you for letting me know you're still there. I hope that I'm helping you. I hope that you're gonna get some, uh, that's not sharpened enough. So yeah, you really need it sharp to get those lines in your hair. And it's a shame to sharpen your pencil because you start to think, oh, it's disappearing. My pencil's getting small. <laughs> but yeah, it's just part. You just need to do it. And every time you go over with another line, you're building up the depth in the hair. So just keep going. Like so, you've seen it starting to come together. Now I'm going to make a little more lines into her shadow, into her, sorry, her shine in her hair. And I'm just going to show you how if we do a little bit darker at the top again. So I'm going to use a walnut brown and more of the same, so little strokes from the top. And then you start to see how the head starts to look round. Can you suggest a good sharpener, please? Right, what have I got? This is the best sharpener I've ever had. I'm going to try and bring it in. It is one of these ones. <laughs> it is called Jacquard. And it's, it's one that you can attach to a desk, but I don't. I carry it around with me. But it is so good. I'll, I'll, before I go, I'll show you it properly. I'll lift up the camera and show you it. It's good. And I've only recently got it because before that, I was just playing around with silly little sharpeners and they weren't great. And I was just finding that they were breaking my pencils or just not sharpening them the way that I wanted them. But this one is really good. So can you see now by using just three different shades of brown and leaving a little shine a bit here you're starting to build up a shine in your hair i hope it's coming across okay 
on the camera. And you just continue to do that. So you can spend ages just doing lots of little strokes in the hair. But I find it ever so relaxing. There, it's starting to shine up now, isn't it? And you can use as well a little bit of like yellow. I've got like a creamy colour. This is cream, getting small. And just on the edges here, not right in. So you've done you've already done your white or your cream in here. And then if you do a little bit just on the where it's at the edges of the hair, you see that? It starts to make it look even shinier. It's like you're tapering it a little bit. So do that at both ends, still keeping that bit right in the centre white. And that really builds up your shine. So there's a little bit of cream. And I'm going to continue doing a little bit darker. And eventually you would have black up here, just coming over the top a little bit. And then that really makes the head start to look round. And this is just my ways of doing it. I mean, there's lots of ways of doing doing your drawing, but this is just the way I've found. There. Do you see it starting to come? How are you all doing? Is your hair starting to look shiny? Yeah? And then just a little bit every now and again up into the centre of your shine. Right, I'm going to use some black now on the top. Can you use the... Oh, that's still the same question. Right. Now I'm going to use black. So I'm going to go along the top here, over that line. Can you see that? So over the line of where the stamp was, just colour that black. And then with little circular motions again, start to come in over the top. Alessia says she's learning lots. That's brilliant. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to let you have a chance to learn something. Right, so they're just little little circular motions. Once you've done your circular motions, you can do them straight, straight across. And then straight away. Straight away there, you can start to see that, make the head look a bit rounder. And you can drag some of that black down into the hair as well. And you kind of want to bring that round to just about there, just to where the head starts to straighten. And then just little circular motions. So there we go. We've done a little bit, haven't we? I think we've done quite well. We've been doing it for an hour and 20 minutes. That's not bad going, is it? There, can you see it start to pop? And then you can emphasize this line here as well now, and this will start to bring in your shadow. Oh, thank you, Jo. I hope you're doing all right, Jo. Jo's lovely. She comes to my workshops. I think she's been to two now. And it's lovely. There. Can you see that shadow starting to appear? So you can then go back in with your light flesh or your darker flesh or whatever. And start to build that back up again. The more you do it, the more you get a feel for what you think you need. So what she needs now is an eyebrow. I'm going to fill that in so we'll do it a bit darker. So just with the light flesh, just little circular motions to try and create more of this little white bit. This little shiny bit above her eye. And then we'll give her some eyelashes. She's already got some that are faintly done. You can still see if you've done it with a light ink, you'll still be able to see them faintly that you can draw over them with your black pen 
or you can ignore them completely and create your own eyelashes. So there we go. And I'm going to make this little bit in here a bit darker again now. So I'm going to use um, the raw umber, I think it is. And I'm just going to sharpen it again. So if you've got like a, a light brown or something like that, we're going to go in here to the corner of our eye and we're going to start to emphasise it a little bit, just, just ever so slightly. Yeah, you don't want to do it heavy handed in there, just a little bit, which starts to emphasise this little bit in here. Yeah? And with the same brown, I'm going to emphasize this line as well not overly just just a little bit i'm going to give it a brown eyebrow so you can either go with this line here that we've got or you can do do like a real eyebrow you know do little line little hairs but i think she quite suits this one anyway so, oh, I went over the line a little bit. So she's maybe going to have a thicker eyebrow than planned. <laughs> I'm just going to turn her around a little bit so that I can get in. So there. Going quite heavy with that. What do you think? Oh, she's superb. Thank you, Jo. That is so kind of you. But it just shows you that with, with a stamp, you can still, you know, create something that looks quite realistic. And by just practicing with your pencils. So Anne saying beautiful. Thank you, Anne. So I'm just, I'm just adding a little bit more brown in here. Oh, I've got an itchy nose. Um, a little bit of brown in here and then again up the side of our hair. I'm going to build up this shadow with the brown. Do you see that starting to come out now? And then again under this line under the black line start building up this little shadow and that makes you think her hair's coming out over her head a little bit so i'm not doing little circular motions now i'm just kind of doing lines because i've got quite a lot of layers going on now and then and under here I've gone quiet. I've run out of things to say. There, can you see that shadow? Right, so with the black pen, I'm going to do her eyelashes. And, oh, thank you, Melanie. You think she's amazing. Oh, that's so kind. I am now going to do her eyelashes. And I'm also going to do a little, just a tiny little black on the inside of her eye there. You know, that little corner bit, just ever so slightly. And then again, in here and round the corner. And I'm going to do, I'm going to follow the eyelashes that she already had. So it's just like a little hook, like so. Another little hook here. Another little hook here. And one there. But you can do your own. That's the good thing about using the light ink. You're not confined to the, dark, the black lines. Right, now with the black, I mean, her hair still needs loads of work. I can't, I'm, I'm gonna finish up in the next couple of minutes now, but you just continue with the shades that you've been doing, just going over and over and over. Take it all the way down. And do the white in here and the cream in here. And then in here, 
you know, it's going to be dark. So use your black in here. And you can bring your black down some of her face. I tend to not do all of it. But just around about there, maybe a little bit here coming up her chin. And then you just continue with these shades all the way. I'll put another couple in here. Bring it all the way down. And then you start to see her come, come to life. So, I think that shall do us for tonight. I'll be here until midnight. <laughs> but I do hope that what I've done has helped you a little bit. I hope you've learned a little something. I hope you've got more confidence. I hope you've just enjoyed relaxing, feeling like you're with other people. And um, there you go. Still loads more to do. Oh, thank you, Glenn. <laughs> that is really kind of you, Glenn. So thank you for supporting me. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to turn it around and say my goodbyes. I want to show you Lo Lola's little picture. Here's Lola's. She's given her freckles and she's given her some curly hair as well. Her hair's starting to get curly. That's lovely, darling. That's really good. Right, I'm going to turn it around. Let me just see how I do that. There. <laughs> I hope you've learned something. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope I haven't just rabbled on a load of nonsense. But I just thought it'd be nice to spend some time with you doing some colour and shade. And we can do some more over the next few days as well. Jules says she loves the freckles, Lola. Thank you. <laughs> Carol says amazing, love. Oh, that's good. I'm really, really pleased that you've enjoyed it. And I hope that you can post your things into my group. Let me see what you've been doing. And um, let me know if there's anything else you want to learn, anything else you want to do. And we'll try and do it over the coming weeks, just to give us something, something to do. Feel like we're a part of something and we're doing something relaxing, something that's going to help us to chill out a little bit. But I'm going to go now. I'll have a look through your messages. I'll try to reply if anybody's asked questions. And that's good, Sam. Happy you enjoyed it. And Maria and Anne, great. And Karen, lovely. Sharpener. Oh, and I wanted to show the sharpener, didn't I? This. This is the sharpener that I use. So, you know, it's one that you'd normally put on a desk, but it is ever so good. I can't remember how much it was, but I got it from um, Art Discount. I try to get a lot of things from Art Discount, but um, yeah. So I'm gonna go now and I shall hopefully see you all again soon. Look after yourselves, stay well and uh, stay home. Okay, see you later. Bye. Bye.